The Cisco ASDM, or Adaptive Security Device Manager, is a nice little tool to give us a graphical user interface front end when we're managing ASAs. Unfortunately, it runs on Java, and because of that, there are certain issues, especially when you're trying to get this up and running on a Linux environment. And I've multiple times spent a lot of time hitting my head against the desk, trying to figure out how to get this up and running, and I've kind of over several attempts, settled on what I think is the best way to get ASDM up and running on Linux. And so that's what I'd like to show you. So what we have here currently is a very basic topology. So I just wanna show you kind of like what we're using on the back end, then I'll show you how to configure this in Linux. Uh, but we've got a Linux virtual machine, we've got an ASA, and I've also got a cloud connection here, which just allows that virtual machine internet access so we can download the appropriate files. So once we go into the virtual machine, I'm already on the, the website that I want uh, you to browse to. This is actually java.com or uh, it may be uh, offered through Oracle as well, but you're just gonna have to Google basically a JRE8 download and you might be able to hopefully find the appropriate download that doesn't require you to sign in. So this one right here is oracle.com and I think that makes you sign in, but if you kind of scroll down there's like the java.com one that doesn't make you sign in. I'm not sure how it works, but you can find a link that doesn't require credentials with a little bit of poking around. And it looks something like this. So once you've found this page for the JRE8 download, you want to download actually this Linux one right here. So not the 64-bit Linux file, but just Linux, right? The 32-bit version, because the 64-bit version is a little inconsistent in how it behaves, and it doesn't really work that well with ASDM. So download the 32-bit version into the directory of your choice. I just make a Java directory in the user's home directory. And once you've downloaded it, it will be, it looks something like this, tar.gz. So we have to go to the command line interface to extract this. Uh, depending on which version of Linux you have, you may have a graphical user interface tool as well. But basically I've just browsed here to the Java directory that I saved that file into. And if you want to extract it, the command here is tar zxvf followed by the name of that compressed file. So I'm not gonna press enter because I've already extracted that, but the end result, once you've extracted the file, is you get this directory right here, jre1.8.0 underscore 231, or whatever it may say for you, you might have a different version. So within that directory, if we do an ls, we've got this bin directory. And if we do an ls of that, we have this Java WS application. And that's what we're really interested in. So that's what will allow us to connect up to the ASDM. So what we could do now, if we wanted to, like this is functioning as is. So if we wanted to, every time we wanted to connect up to uh, an ASA using ASDM, we could just specify the full path of that particular application. So in this case, I'm using tilde for the user's home directory, Java, JRE1, uh, bin, Java WS. And I could just type that out every time I want to uh, connect to uh, an ASDM. And after that, you do HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of your ASA, which is in this case is just the default 192.168.1.1. And then you do a forward slash admin forward slash public forward slash ASDM dot JNLP. And if you press enter, it will open up or it will begin the process of opening up the ASDM. But that's not really, I don't think that's the best solution because it's kind of a pain. Not only is the path, I'm just closing out of that, not only is the path to the application pretty long and difficult to type out, uh, the actual link to the uh, ASDM file that you need is also kind of long and difficult to type out. So what I like to do is actually modify the .bashrc file and include a function so you can more easily access the ASDM as you're connecting up to different ASAs. So how do you do that? Let's go back to the home directory. I'm gonna do v, vi .bashrc. If we go all the way to the bottom here, 
Basically, you just make a simple function. This is a, a pretty much as simple as a function can get. So right down here at the bottom, we've got ASDM launcher function. And the function is called ASDM. So it's function ASDM. And then in that function, enclosed in brackets, we've got uh, tilde uh, forward slash Java, you know, the same path that we already discussed all the way to Java WS. And then the second part of that is really just the link with a dollar sign one substitute for the IP address. So we've basically taken that exact same command, but we put it in a function and we put this dollar sign one here. And what the dollar sign one means is put the first argument that we pass to this function where that dollar sign one is, right? So that's what it, that refers to. So how does that actually work in, uh, in practice? So what we can do, instead of typing out the full path and everything, we can just do, because the function's called ASDM, we can just say ASDM 192.168.1.1, and it will just fill that in. So then we click continue, and it will go ahead and launch the ASDM application. So that's the way I like to do it. It's just a little bit less typing, and there's a, you may have to actually source bash.rc. So let me show you how to do that really quickly. So if you make that modification, it's not gonna start working immediately. You have to actually tell Bash to update how it's uh, thinking about things, right? So you have to update um, Bash RC. So you do dot dot Bash RC, and that will just sort of bring the new function into the environment so you can use it. So once again, the if you use that, that route as opposed to manually typing everything out, it's just ASDM followed by, by the IP address. And that can kind of just simplify things, especially if you're connecting up to a lot of different ASAs. So let's see what's going on in the background here. Yeah, so we've got a username, we've got a password. Uh, let's see, let's go to our ASA really quickly. And let me do, mm, just make sure there's a password configured. And we'll do Cisco. All right, and it looks like we're connecting up, downloading the updated software and it should be launching any moment here. So just to recap, while this is doing its thing, we downloaded the 32-bit version of JRE8, and we didn't use the built-in versions that you can get through the Linux repositories because they aren't, they don't work very well. So we actually went and grabbed Oracle's versions, 32-bit version, we downloaded it, we extracted it, and then we just made a simple function in the dot bash rc file that allows us to just type ASDM followed by an IP address as opposed to a really long path to Java WS and then a really long URL. So let's see, no license installed, that's expected here. And it's just kind of getting the current configuration of the ASA and updating the ASDM. So as you can see here, oh, leave me alone. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got a current view of how things are, are functioning on this, uh, this ASA through the ASDM. So hopefully that is something somewhat useful to you. I think the main thing is to use 32-bit as opposed to 64-bit. That seems to be the thing that's really helped uh, for me at least. So once again, I hope it's, that's been helpful and you have fun with your ASDM and ASA.